Thanks so much and good evening, everyone. Glad to have you with us tonight. Growing controversy and the latest battle in the war on terror. Just how much privacy are you willing to give up for security? I spy. How far should the president go in spying on Americans? I swore to uphold the laws. Do I have the legal authority to do this? And the answer is absolutely. When it comes to terrorism, where are the limits? A failure to communicate. What if you called 911 for help? Are we on 911? Is this an emergency? Um, I believe it is. And got an argument instead. They're running. I mean, they're not fighting. They're not yelling. They're, they're nothing. He jumped through her window while she was squealing over there. The outrage over not one, but two calls for help and the tragedy that might have been prevented. The art of the steal. Incredible hidden video of pickpockets at work. He's a pickpocket. He's a pickpocket. He's a pickpocket. So, so is pickpocket. this one, and so is this one. Now you have it. Now you don't. You might not even know. It's probably one of the most underreported crimes in the country. How you can avoid being pick clean. And phone range. I hate it. Why? You can't talk to a human being. The vicious side of voicemail. Press one if you'd like to murder the operator. Tonight on Paula's On Now. We begin tonight with dramatic and exclusive amateur video that came in just about 30 minutes ago showing the fatal crash of a seaplane in Miami earlier today. Very hard to watch this. The video shows a plane crashing into the sea off Miami Beach in front of horrified onlookers on the beach. As the plane dives into the ocean, the burning fuselage falls into the sea right behind it. There were 20 people on board the aircraft. The Coast Guard says so far 19 bodies have been recovered and the divers are still searching the wreckage at this hour. John Zarella is in Miami Beach. He's been covering this developing story for us tonight. He joins us now. So, John, you got to imagine this videotape will be of some help to investigators. What's the latest on that? Boy, absolutely, Paula. It is uh, not often that uh, National Transportation Safety Board investigators, who we expect here at the scene uh, some point this evening, if they are not already here, not that often that they get an opportunity to actually see those last that last instant before impact. It is invaluable to them when they are separating out what witnesses think they might have saw, perhaps conjecture, because so many times what a witness thinks they saw is not actually what happened. When they have this video, it will go a long way to help them. But in fact, at this point, what we are hearing from eyewitnesses, uh, many of them telling us that in fact, the plane appeared to explode in the air before crashing back to the ground. I seen a plane coming across, coming through government cut, make a left-hand turn, wing came off, exploded. Now it uh, hit that water right behind me here, and of course it is pitch black out here. We are on the very southern end of uh, Miami Beach. Police car here and the tape roping off this area. In fact, just a few minutes ago, a Coast Guard helicopter was right along the beach here behind me, Paula, with its searchlights, apparently looking for possibly for debris or possibly uh, the remains of that 20th victim. Again, in the distance, the boats have that whole area government cut secured, uh, no boat traffic going in and out. And of course, as many people know, uh, government cut is the entrance, the uh, the exit for the huge cruise ship terminal here. That's been shut down tonight. And uh, from what we understand, Paula will not reopen again until tomorrow. This uh, Chalks seaplane owned by Chalks Airways was on its way to Bimini at the time of the crash. Paula? John, do we know anything at this hour about the history of this aircraft and any problems it might have had over the years? No, not of the aircraft of its in and of itself, but we know from the company uh, held a, gave a brief statement earlier this afternoon uh, that they've been in business since 1919 under two or three different names, but basically chalks all the time, uh, and that this is the first time, according to the company, that they have had any kind of a fatal accident uh, involving any passengers on any of their flights and they do fly quite often uh you know in and out of miami uh, in and out of uh, in watson island which is called to a lot of the islands in the bahamas in fact uh, we here at cnn have flown them uh, on several occasions chalks uh, over to uh, to nassau and into the bahamas
Paula? John, we're watching that video again, and it seems uh, quite obvious that some of what the eyewitness is describing appear to be accurate with a wing tearing apart from the rest of the fuselage. It is just absolutely horrifying to watch. But uh chalks uh, over to, uh, to Nassau and into the Bahamas. Paula? John, we're watching that video again, and it seems uh, quite obvious that some of what the eyewitness is describing appear to be accurate with a wing tearing apart from the rest of the fuselage. It is just absolutely horrifying to watch, but uh, hopefully this will give investigators a, a leap in understanding yes. what went so terribly wrong. John Zarella, thanks so much for the update. There's another big story to talk about tonight in Washington. A mammoth battle is raging over your security, and we're considering a question no one thought we'd face only six days before Christmas. Has the president of the United States flagrantly broken laws in the name of protecting you from terrorists? As White House correspondent Suzanne Malveaux reports in our Security Watch, President Bush has his own opinions and lots of opposition, too. President Bush defended his top-secret domestic wiretapping program, insisting that eavesdropping on callers in the U.S. to possible terrorists overseas is perfectly legal. I swore to uphold the laws. Do I have the legal authority to do this? And the answer is absolutely. The debate over the president's legal authority is at the heart of what is quickly becoming a very heated controversy. He is the president, not a king. Shortly after the September 11th attacks, the president said he green-lighted a government program to wiretap calls from within the United States of suspected terrorists without obtaining a warrant from a special court as required by law. The president says going through the normal channels to get permission for wiretapping under some circumstances is too slow. To save American lives, we must be able to act fast and to detect these conversations so we can prevent new attacks. The president says as commander in chief during wartime, both the U.S. Constitution and Congress's authorization to go after Al Qaeda give him the authority to bypass normal channels. Some constitutional scholars say the president is on shaky legal ground. But politically, he may have the upper hand. This is a situation in which Congress will probably have to solve the problem, or at least political pressure bring an end to the program, because no one knows they're being searched, so they can't even bring a court challenge to these sorts of interceptions. While Democrats are accusing the president of breaking the law, Republicans are reserving judgment, but calling for congressional hearings. Mr. Bush is focusing on who may have leaked his top-secret spying program to the press. It was a shameful act for someone to disclose this very important program in time of war. The, the fact that we're discussing this program is uh, helping the enemy. The president said a small number of lawmakers were briefed on the program at least a dozen times. But the ranking Democrat of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Jay Rockefeller, released a letter to the vice president he had sealed two years ago which expressed his reservations about the program, saying, given the security restriction associated with this information and my inability to consult staff or counsel on my own, I feel unable to fully evaluate, much less endorse these activities. And Congress is expected to begin hearings on this matter early next year. Paula? Suzanne Malveau, thanks so much for the update. We turn now to Democratic Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, who serves on the Subcommittee of Terrorism, Technology, and Homeland Security. Senator Durbin, do you think the president broke the law? The president had no legal authority to eavesdrop on or wiretap uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of Americans on American soil. Uh, he says that it was his, under his power as commander-in-chief, and I will just tell you that there was a clear legal way to do this, and in many cases the president did not follow it. But the president says that in fact what he did was legal, that he's protecting the civil liberties of Americans, and went on to say today during a news conference that the information netted from this very act has stopped terrorist plots. Is the president lying? I have no way of knowing whether or not uh, the information gathered was of value to us. Every president will tell you that there is a good reason for ignoring the law, which the president has done in this case. But we really need to step back and ask, why did this president decide at this moment in history to ignore the clear standards of the law? a standard which allows him to go to a secret court, even on an expedited basis, if he feels that someone is engaged in terrorist activity. 
This administration just ignored that. But the administration said quite forcefully in a couple of different fronts today, not only out of the president's mouth, but as attorney general, that they have followed the law here. I don't believe that. I think the law is very clear. And under the law, a president cannot decide on his own without going through a court process to eavesdrop and wiretap on American citizens. In this case, the president did so. And he said as commander in chief, he was authorized to do so. I don't believe that's true. The president is accusing the folks who leaked this of shameful conduct. Why would someone leak information about this program now? I have no idea how this came about. I was on the Intelligence Committee for years. We were never apprised that this was even occurring when it was going on. Uh, someone decided or some people decided to, to make this known. And as a consequence now, all of the American people realize that for years the president's been engaged in activity which is not legally authorized. The president says even having a public discussion about this is helping the enemy. Do you, you know, believe that? In a democracy, an open discussion of ideas is important. I really, as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, took care not to disclose classified information for fear that it could endanger lives or reduce the security of America. But there comes a point for a national debate, and we've reached it. Now that this has been published in major newspapers and discussed all around the country, I think we need to have the investigation that Senator Specter has asked for to understand why the president believes he has authority, which the law clearly does not give him. Senator Durbin, thank you so much for your perspective. We appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, there are an awful lot of issues to consider here, but they boil down to a few basic questions. Did you know that our government can spy on anyone at any time? All it takes is a warrant, and it can be issued either before or after the fact. But President ordered wiretaps without doing even that. But does it mean President Bush actually broke the law? Senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin is here to break it down for all of us. Always good to see you, Jeffrey. Hey. So bottom line, is it legal for the U.S. government to spy on you, spy on me, or anybody else in the United States? Absolutely. They can wiretap, they can bug your house, bug your bedroom, uh, bug your phone, if they get a court order. And how do they do that? Well, they go the, in, in a uh, criminal investigation, they go to just a regular federal judge. But in a national security investigation, they go to this special court that was created in 1978. It's not a very high standard. There have been 19,000 applications to this court as of a couple years ago, and only five were turned down. So it's virtually a rubber stamp. But the administration decided that even that was too much of a hurdle. So they did it on their own. Why? Is the question. Well, the and, if, particularly if the secret court is a rubber stamp for these requests. I, I think it fits into a whole perspective that we've seen from this administration, especially Vice President Cheney. They feel that the presidency has been weakened in recent years and they need to reassert the president's power. And they also felt that it would, the, the court slowed them down too much in a world of cell phones and Blackberries. So did the president break the law? It, it, what's striking to me is that not a lot of people are coming to his defense on this one. Right. At, at, Senator based on, Durbin just told well, me. He's a, he he's a Democrat. Well, you sure. could say he was out to get him. But there haven't been a lot of Republicans jumping up and saying uh, that, that, this, that this is permissible activity. I think it's going to be very tough for the president to justify this activity. I haven't heard an explanation that's persuasive. The president's invocation of Article 2 of the Constitution, which says he's the commander in chief of the military, that doesn't seem to get you this far. So as we leave you tonight, if you're an American citizen, let's say you have relatives in Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan, and you're making phone calls to those relatives in those two countries, or any country for that matter, you're fair game? You were fair game all along. Now it appears you were even more likely to be wiretapped. And the president says that's to protect us all. Maybe it is. The debate rages on. Jeffrey Tubin, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Imagine walking down the street and coming face to face with a man police say is a very dangerous criminal accused of a horrifying crime. It wasn't until he got on the sidewalk and was close enough to me where I could touch him, where he looked up in, uh, into my eyes and I immediately recognized who he was. Coming up, the astonishing story of how a man who was outside the law finally got caught, but not before he pulled a knife on himself. Was it all about theater? And a little bit later on, why did a 911 call in this Colorado city bring an argument instead of help? We also got a real eye opener for you tonight. If you intend to put on a happy face for the holidays, you're facing a long wait.
I have an innate fear of being boxed in. That's why I left the corporate world and went out on my own. I wanted to create something. Some people write symphonies. I write code. But dreams don't pay the overhead. Believers do. Eventually, you need someone who sees what you see. Who thinks like you think. Being open-minded is what led Chris to start his own business and why we gave him the financing he needed two years before his bank would. Open. How American Express serves small business. Memoirs of a Geisha is the love story of the year. Every step I have taken has been to bring myself closer to you. Now it's a Golden Globe nominee. This is a great movie. Memoirs of a Geisha. Ready PG-13. Opens everywhere Friday. In this joyful season, as you prepare your home for long-awaited reunions and shop for those dear to your heart, please remember the families who are struggling with even the most basic essentials many of us take for granted. Give generously to the Salvation Army and help your neighbors down the street and across the country who desperately need it, including those recovering from the recent hurricanes. eLoan offers home equity loans with online appraisals and respect. Find out how much equity is in your home by applying today with eLoan. Those are some of the revolutionary ways we're changing the lending industry. eLoan, radically simple. In tonight's Outside the Law, the latest developments in another story we've been following very closely. Right now, the man accused of a brutal sexual attack back on Halloween night in New York City is in police custody in Tennessee. Peter Bronstein is waiting to be sent back to New York, where he will face several charges. He was caught just two days ago, but not before he put up a bloody resistance. Adora Udoji tells us exactly what happened in tonight's Outside the Law. Journalist Peter Brownstein was used to writing headlines, not making them. But he managed to elude police for 46 days in a manhunt that grabbed huge headlines in New York City. The chase took him from New York to Ohio to Tennessee, where he was finally captured. Brownstein carried out his final moments of freedom with a dramatic flair. Witnesses say he used a knife on himself. Stabbed himself in the neck, right about here. And uh, he fell over, keeled over down on his knees, and blood spread everywhere. It was a bizarre ending to a chase triggered by accusations of a brutal and elaborate crime against a man who once wrote for fashion magazines such as W. Back on Halloween, police say Brownstein dressed up in a firefighter's uniform he bought on the internet. They say he set two small fires to lure a former W colleague out of her trendy neighborhood apartment. Then police say Brownstein drugged her with chloroform, tied her up, and sexually abused her for more than 12 hours, which he allegedly videotaped. That morning on November 1st, police say Brownstein checked into the Super 8 Hotel, which is just around the corner from Times Square here in New York City. And by the next day, they say he was on the run already in Cleveland, Ohio. Meanwhile, there were continued sightings of him in New York City while tabloids had a field day. Headlines blared a sex fiend was on the loose, making some women anxious. Reporters hounded Brownstown's mother. No way I've had enough of the newspapers. Brownstown's father also struggled with the news. Uh, it was just devastating, devastating. And he predicted correctly, as it turned out, that his son would give police a tough time. He's going to try and play a, a cat and mouse with the police to see, uh, but how far can he go? 
The story aired on America's Most Wanted, and that would turn out to be crucial to Brownstein's arrest. By November 28th, police say the suspect was in Memphis, Tennessee, collecting $20 for donating his blood. Two weeks later, Brownstein was on the campus of Memphis University. Annette Brown happened to see him. She also happened to just have seen Brownstein on America's Most Wanted. It wasn't until he got on the sidewalk and was close enough to me where I could touch him when he looked up in, um, into my eyes and I immediately recognized who he was. She told campus police who confronted him. He asked him to stop. He proceeded to pepper spray him. Guy wouldn't go down. Brownstein finally did go down after stabbing himself. He was arrested and taken to the hospital. He had been in trouble before. After stalking an ex-girlfriend, he was put on probation. He retaliated on a website calling her a biohazard. When he was captured, he was carrying notebooks, reportedly accounting the past six weeks. His father says his son desperately needs help. He's got mental problems, so uh, you cannot uh, treat him as a rational person. So whatever he's written, those letters and everything else, uh, it's a sick mind writing, it's not him. That will be for a New York court to decide. In Tennessee, Brownstein waived extradition. He returns to New York to face a number of charges, including sexual abuse. Adora Udoji, CNN, New York. In addition to sexual assault, Bronstein will also be charged with kidnapping, robbery, and burglary. Right now, I want to play for you part of a 911 call. A man had just jumped into a woman's car, but listen to this dispatcher. Is she actually arguing against sending help? I don't think they need help. They're going to yell or scream or fight or something. Right. So they may have just been playing around. No, I don't think so. Was the dispatcher out of line? What was she thinking and what really happened? Stay with us. It's shocking. And a little bit later on, some amazing undercover video and a report we all need to see. It could stop a pickpocket from running off with your money during these very busy shopping days. Always elegant, always refined. Santa Margarita, the timeless expression of exquisite quality and taste. No wonder Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio is the most requested imported wine in fine restaurants. When every detail makes a difference, Santa Margarita is the wine you choose. Taste is the difference. Experience Santa Margarita from Paterno Wines International. I can't believe it's not butter. I'm craving that rich butter taste. Hey, Nikos! The gold key. I can't believe it's not butter. Wow. Made with sweet cream buttermilk for a fresh butter taste that's naturally cholesterol free. Nikos, you missed a spot. I can't believe it's not butter. Outrageously great taste without the cholesterol. CNN Tonight. The Apprentice controversy heats up with winner Randall, runner-up Rebecca, and Donald Trump. Should he have hired them both? Larry King Live, CNN Tonight, 9 Eastern. It's great when you get all those credit cards in the mail. It's not so great when the bills show up. Medical bills wiped out our savings. Refinancing helped us through it. Have you heard that money isn't the answer to all your problems? At Countrywide Home Loans, we've seen millions of problems where money from a home loan was the answer. So call America's number one home loan lender now. No one can do what Countrywide can. Apply now to get cash before rates go up. Visit your local branch or call 1-800-641-7691. We turn now to a story that has quite frankly left a lot of folks who have heard about it stunned. If you have an emergency and you dial 911, you can be pretty sure you're going to get help pretty fast. Or can you? You're about to hear the actual tapes of a 911 operator who not only couldn't be convinced there was an emergency, she actually seemed to debate the people who were pleading with her for help. Our Sean Caleb's investigated the incident, and when you see this, you're bound to ask, what was she thinking? It was summer 2001. Instead of blowing snow, heat was coming off the asphalt parking lot. 
Pizza delivery man John Chauvin called the Aurora, Colorado Police Emergency Line, believing he was witnessing a carjacking. Are we on 911? Is this an emergency? Um, I believe it is. What's going on? Um, this black guy jumped into the station waiting car. Mm-hmm. Like he was squealing away from her. And then he parked it in the parking lot. So he's still in the car with her. The young woman was 21-year-old Lee Tu Win. Friends and family say her former fiancé, Omar Green, was a threat. Wynn's mother, Susan Duvall, also called 911 after her daughter's co-worker at a salon called and said Green had worked himself into Wynn's car. This is the response Duvall got. I talked to people there. John was not fighting. She was not screaming. She did not ask for help. Nothing. Right. We don't know whether he's, he has a weapon or what. But does he know to carry a weapon? Um, I don't know him as to know. I don't. I just know, you know, threatening things that he's trying to do to her. I think mean, a lot of times they end up making back up together. They, may, they end up making up. Right, well, that's not the case. She's, she's okay, well, we don't know, because we haven't talked to her. Right, um, I, I just would like to record it, because I know she's, she's beautiful and nice from here. Try as they would, the two callers could not get the dispatcher to accept the sense of urgency, even dismissing attempts to describe what kind of car was involved. Okay, you would like the car description? Well, they're, they're running, I mean, they're not fighting. They're not yelling. They're, they're nothing. He jumped through her window while she was squealing away. Okay, well, you think they should be fighting or something? I mean, I can have the officers check the area. Right. But that's about, I mean, it, she'd be fighting or screaming or something if she needed help. Turns out, Wynn had good reason to live in fear. Police found her body two days later. And the ex-fiance, Green, was convicted of the murder. I knew it was serious. I needed to give her the, the main concern of this call. Her life was in danger. Authorities say the dispatcher, Jeanette Price, was reprimanded. Duvall filed a lawsuit, not against the city of Aurora. Colorado law prohibits citizens from suing cities. Instead, Duvall's attorneys are going after the dispatcher, saying Price's response allowed Omar Green to kill. He's in the car. The tires are screeching. And it's not property. This is humanity that we're dealing with. How much more of an emergency do you want before you send the police when a human's being attacked by another human inside of a vehicle? Aurora city attorneys are representing Price and admit her actions were negligent. But stop there. And here's why that's so important. To win the case, Duvall's legal team must prove Price disregarded the emergency calls in a willful and wanton way, disregarding any concern for safety. A big part of the case will be Price's own words. Okay, I'll, I'll have a check on it, but you know, if they need help, they're going to yell or scream or fight or something. Right. So they may have just been playing around. No, I don't think so. She's an old... Okay, I will have them check the area, okay? Thank you. Thanks. According to the lawsuit, Price willfully and wantingly failed to send police on an emergency run. The Aurora City Attorney says emergency call takers have to make critical judgments under very tight timelines in order to respond. And, quote, Ms. Price utilized her professional judgment and training in an effort to ascertain what would be an appropriate response. Sean Cadlebs, CNN, Denver. And there's one more thing to add. Omar Green, the ex-fiancé, is now in prison serving a life sentence for murder, kidnap, and assault. What you see in our next story could stop a thief from ruining your holiday. He's a pickpocket. He is a pickpocket. He's a pickpocket. So, so He's is pickpocket. this one, and so is this one. There oh, are four, four guys, guys here. Pickpockets are getting really creative and they're really good at what they do. We've got some hidden cameras to prove it, as well as some advice on how to stay ahead of them. And a little bit later on, is there any way to stay ahead of those computer generated operators when you call a store or a government agency? Stay tuned. Jeannie Moss is heading to the phone. In this joyful season, as you prepare your home for long-awaited reunions and shop for those dear to your heart, please remember the families who are struggling with even the most basic essentials many of us take for granted. Give generously to the Salvation Army and help your neighbors down the street and across the country who desperately need it, including those recovering from the recent hurricanes.
This is Cozumel Today. Cozumel invites you to rediscover the joy of its amazing underwater sceneries, breathtaking natural reserves, sun, sea, friendly people, and so much more. As always, Cozumel, Mexico, beyond your expectations. My customers come to me because I care. I take more time to know not just their name, not just that they're getting the medication, but I try to find out, are you okay? Is everything going on? Can I help you with something? It's more than just medicine being a pharmacist. I work the late night shift and I get probably more calls from people who in the middle of the night can't get to the hospital, can't call their doctor, and to know they have someone there to be of assistance to them and answer their questions is awesome. My name is Yushima Thomas and I'm a CVS pharmacist. Of all the safety innovations that are built into a BMW X3, the most remarkable is BMW performance. It gives you the control and agility to survive accidents by avoiding them. Beyond passive safety is active safety. All new BMWs have full maintenance covering oil changes to brakes for four years or 50,000 miles. What if a Plantronics headset wasn't there in 1969? See you coming down the ladder now. That's one small step for man. One giant <laughs> Either. Now we make wireless headsets for everyone. Buy your wireless office headset today. Go to Plantronics.com slash wireless. Plantronics. Sound innovation. I don't know how far along you are with your holiday shopping, but it's the final week and the malls are packed, making for ideal hunting grounds for pickpockets. Just how easy is it to steal your wallet? Well, our consumer correspondent, Greg Hunter, asked an expert with a hidden camera to show us exactly how it's done and what you can do to keep from getting ripped off. Watch this lady very carefully. You're about to witness a crime. Here it comes. Did you see it? Within two seconds, this woman's wallet got picked out from her bag. Here it is again. As the woman walks, the guy on the right distracts her. Then the guy on the left slips his hand into her bag and snags her wallet right there. It looks like a pretty simple crime, but in fact, there's a lot to it. Trust me, when it happens to you, you remember it for a long time. Bob Arna was a former entertainer from Sweden who used to have a pickpocketing stage act. He's perfected his craft so well, he now teaches police officers how to protect against pickpockets. What would you call yourself? Basically, I'm a thief hunter. I'm always looking for these guys. Armed with a hidden camera, Arno travels the world trying to catch pickpockets in action. That's me there with those... He showed me some of his never-before-seen video. You're basically setting yourself up to get the video. There is no question that we are setting ourselves up to be the victim. That is how we most of the time can catch them. These aren't actors, these are Not real crooks. Nothing, real crook. Here, you actually see someone take his wallet. A thief will immediately realize that there's a little gaping here. It stands out. That means you have something heavy in the pocket. Arno says pickpockets usually work in teams like this man and woman. One is pretending to shop. The other is stalking his victim. The real shopper has no idea what's about to happen to her. The moment she turns her back, her wallet is swiped, just like that. She doesn't even realize it's gone. Hey, hey, hey! Don't you dare put your hand in my pocket! This guy caught a pickpocket while Arno was videotaping. Turns out, the crook wasn't alone. He's a pickpocket? He is a pickpocket. He's a pickpocket. So, so He's is a pickpocket. this one, and so is this one. There oh, are four, four guys, guys here. Sure. And remember this video? That's Arno's wife, whose wallet was taken while he was videotaping. There were at least two people involved here. If they are slightly out of sync between the two of them, that will never happen. So how do you protect yourself? The secret is understanding the crime. And nobody knows it better than 13-year veteran detective Cedric Mitchell of the Metro Transit Police in Washington, D.C. It's hard to keep statistics because if you're a good pickpocket, 
the victim never know they're a victim. They think they lost their wallet. So how do they make a police report? They can't make a police report. So it's probably one of the most underreported crimes in the country. Most crooks hate a crowd. Pickpockets, just the opposite. The more people, the better it is. Crowd is a pickpocket's best friend. Best friend, partner. Partner in crime and don't even realize it. That's because in a crowd, thieves can get close to you without any questions, like they did to Helen Williams on a jammed escalator three years ago. I think I may have felt someone brush against me. And you were carrying a purse like, you were carrying this purse? I was carrying this purse. And uh, the wallet is usually, uh, usually probably propped up against my items up, up front. So it was an easy target, very easy for someone to just lift. In a flash, it was gone. She took immediate action. Canceled credit cards, I canceled the checks, uh, canceled my debit card, my ATM card, and I just knew I'd, I'd be okay once I got, I did that. But the nightmare was just beginning. Within a few weeks, she started receiving bill after bill for purchases she had never made, totaling $10,000. It took about a year to clear it all up. Clothing, toys, food, computers, books. They were living on you? Yeah living on me for, for quite some time, and, and they got a lot of good things in my name. But Helen played a big role in luring the pickpockets. For one thing, she was carrying an open purse with no zipper, and it was swung behind her, a common mistake. If a lady's purse is hanging in the back, she's in trouble. The minute it's behind, it depends, of course, on the buckle and so forth, but on a one to 10, that's a nine for a thief to get into. And it's almost as easy to snatch the purse Look at what happened to the 76-year-old woman whose handbag was ripped away from her last year. Were you afraid? Yes, of course. I was uh, trembling. I was uh, scared. Isabel Manuel's purse was snatched right here in this Tucson, Arizona parking lot. She was robbed all right, but this crime was anything but random. Like pickpockets, this guy took his time to find the perfect victim. He hung around the parking lot pretending to play a video game. Isabel and her daughter Myra weren't paying any attention to him, and that was a mistake. So he waited till Myra sat in the driver's seat and Isabel's back was turned. The door's open, you're doing what? Fixing the bag. Groceries right there. The groceries, yeah. And the guy comes up behind you and he puts Some, both hands on his... Pull, pulling my bag. So he's doing this, then what do you do? Yeah, I saw him. I, I don't want to give it to him. And so he's pulling you. Yeah. And you're pulling so, back. And suddenly, yeah. After taking that nasty fall, Isabel is on the mend. The crook was caught and convicted. Now we don't trust anybody anymore. And Isabel and Myra are now on guard every time they go out. But plenty of people aren't. Walking around our nation's capital, Detective Mitchell and I easily find prime targets for pickpockets. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am. Hi, I'm Greg Hunter with CNN. How you doing? This is Detective Mitchell. How you doing? Can we just open your purse to see how easy it is to open? Okay. And you had your purse sure. behind your back? Yes. Oh, how easy is that? Very easy. And look, her wallet was sitting right on top. So what should I do? What should you do? Carry your purse this way. Oh. Now the flat rest is there. There's no way I can get into the pocketbook. Oh, good. That's good. all you have to That's do. And the purse simple. in front and not and behind? Yeah, you can, if you like to lean, there you go. Perfect. Now you, can, you can't be a victim. Men, especially if they look like they have money, are also targets. Where do you carry your wallet? Uh, on my inside pocket. Inside pocket. Jacket open? Uh, most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time, jacket's open. So jacket open is bad. Jacket open is bad. Why? Because it lends myself easier to get into the pocket. So I would get in here, and then basically they hold on and they slide it out. How, so how much could you feel at yeah, all? I don't feel anything at all. Right? If you just button that button right there, mm -hmm. you've just safeguarded yourself. And check out this woman. She's got a backpack. Mitchell says it's too easy for a crook to get into. And he finds things she should leave at home. And take all those checkbooks out. Okay. The more things you carry, checkbooks and credit cards, the, the more, more you, they... give, you give them to steal. How do you feel now? I feel better because I'm gonna do something about it. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna listen to Greg and we have some tips from him right now. Carry a money belt during the shopping week and to fool the pickpockets, carry a dummy wallet in your back pocket. So now that we've gotten you past the pickpockets, we found a stocking stuffer for your favorite aging baby boomer. It is guaranteed to give them a lift. Some people get a diamond ring, some people get a car, and some people get a facelift. 
Would you be offended if someone gave you a facelift for Christmas? Or at a minimum, Botox. Stay tuned for tonight's eye opener. And a little bit later on, Jeannie Mose has an ear opener. What shouldn't you say to those computer generated phone operators, no matter how annoying they are? I fight a war that never stops. I work in infectious diseases at GlaxoSmithKline. You know how hard it is to find a new drug? Think of it this way. One of these snowflakes will fight one kind of infection and be safe enough for people to take. A scientist here could work through a million compounds and find only one new drug. And then we start again, because bacteria develop resistance and new viruses appear. The war never stops. GlaxoSmithKline. Today's medicines finance tomorrow's miracles. Whenever I want a gift, I always go to Steinmark. They have something for everyone. Wonderful clothes. Accessories, purses, men's clothes, candles, picture frames, beautiful ceramics. They're amazing. You walk into Steinmark and it gives you an idea for a gift. A panache gift card. Wonderful last minute, perfect gift idea. You can put any amount on it. They can buy whatever they want. Buy a lot of gifts at Steinmark. I can go to one place, go through my whole list and get everything that everybody needs. Steinmark. Once you go, you get it. You cannot beat Steinmark's prices. You've got to shop there. You've got to go. Before there was Enron or WorldCom, there was Globodyne. What's going on? Oh! They may have taken Dick Harper's job. What about the employees? It's going to be fun. Our lawn was repossessed today. We followed the rules and we got screwed. But this Christmas, put all those people out of work. It's not about the paycheck. And he's getting away with $400 million. It's about the payback. He's got to go. Fun with Dick and Jay. Rated PG-13. Justin Marciani. Why not bundle with Bell Solid right now? I'm not Justin Marciani. Don't you want me? Get the services you need and up to $125 cash back. Only from Bell South. Listening. Answer. wandering eyes off your laptop. Reassuring, removable 3M privacy filters. Now you see it, now they don't. Find yours at 3MPrivacyFilter.com. In tonight's eye opener, forget about expensive chocolates or cashmere sweaters this Christmas. How about a gift of Botox? Believe me, it's not that far-fetched in the season. Uh, you may actually have to stand in line to get that new look. Jonathan Freed has tonight's eye opener, the gift with a lift. You can't box him or wrap him or tie him with a bow, but that isn't stopping people from giving this Chicago doctor and his Botox as a gift this season. And some people get a diamond ring, some people get a car, and some people get a facelift. It's the busiest time of the year for Dr. Stephen Dion, a time when good friends tell each other, well, you could use a little work. I'll put some Botox in here, I'll put some around here, and a little bit around here, and what it's gonna do is gonna raise your eyebrows a little bit, so make your eyes look a little more open. Oh, you're, gonna, you're gonna love it. When Rita Conway decided to perk herself up a bit, she decided it would also be the perfect present for her friend, Michelle Goody. What am I gonna, I'm gonna get her another sweater. I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> she has enough sweaters. Seems a lot of people have enough sweaters. The American Society of Plastic Surgeons tells us just about every one of their doctors experiences a big boost in business between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Many people are coming in now asking to look good for the holidays and I can make them look great with just a few procedures today. The doctor says minimally invasive procedures like Botox or some laser treatments are the most popular because they heal so quickly in time for those holiday parties. Nose jobs take a week to heal. And if you want a facelift, it could be a month before you can unwrap the new you. Now, was Michelle offended when Rita popped the Botox idea? Oh God, no. Oh. She said a lot worse things to me to offend me, and as I have to her. <laughs> no, it was a nice Christmas present. And for Rita, it's a secret gift for her husband. She hopes not 
too secret, though. It's because I didn't tell my husband I was coming. So I'm going to probably not tell him to see if he can notice. And then if he doesn't notice, then I'll, you know, yell at him. That's awesome. Thank you. Sure. I would walk by a mirror and I would see my constant frown and it would just irritate me. I always looked angry and now I can look a little bit more refreshed and friendly, <laughs> maybe approachable. <laughs> the cost for a Botox session? Dr. Diane charges between three and six hundred dollars, depending on the case. I don't think I've gotten very many Christmas presents that would be better than this, in all honesty. So, I'm happy with it. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. Thank you. <laughs> Call it the gift that keeps on lifting. Jonathan Freed, CNN, Chicago. And then there's this. The American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery says there were nearly 12 million surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures performed in the U.S. just last year. And in just a minute, you're going to meet the real live person behind some of those computer-generated phone operators we all end up talking to at some point. Sorry, try telling me your 10-digit account number once more. Believe it or not, there's actually a right and a wrong way to talk back to voices like hers. We'll explain. Stay with us. Oh. You don't win a marathon in the first 100 meters. Success comes from weathering the challenges and going the distance, regardless of the conditions. We believe long-term investing is a basic principle that can help you realize your financial objectives. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. CNN Next. The Apprentice controversy heats up with winner Randall, runner-up Rebecca, and Donald Trump. Should he have hired them both? Larry King Live, next on CNN. This time last year, Jack was diagnosed with high cholesterol, which meant he could develop heart disease. And he didn't know other factors could increase his risk even more. He felt okay. He really thought he was fine. He wasn't. But instead of doing nothing, he got the facts. Jack found over time, cholesterol can turn a healthy artery into a clogged artery. So as remarkable as the heart is, Jack needed information on how to help protect it. He got the My Heart Now Kit. It's yours free by visiting myheartkit.com or calling 1-866-852-8381. Like Jack, you'll learn about high cholesterol and other risk factors. You'll also receive information about a proven treatment that can lower cholesterol to help reduce your risk. Now, Jack Jack's biggest concern is, wait till his wife sees the mess in the kitchen. Take care of your heart. Call 1-866-852-8381 for your free My Heart Now kit. So, you don't think your smelly arthritis rub affects anyone's sleep? Try odor-free Aspercream. It's long-lasting and clinically proven to relieve pain. Aspirin-free Aspercream. Now everyone can get the sleep they need. When the IRS levied my business and personal accounts, I didn't know where to turn. My CPA recommended American Tax Relief. If you owe over $10,000 to the IRS or state, call American Tax Relief for a free consultation. Look, the IRS is offering you a one-time opportunity to settle your debt. This is your one second chance. Use it well. I thought I was going to lose my business, but American Tax Relief got me a second chance. Call 800-317-0686 for your free consultation. Call 800-317-0686. I'm a nurse, and washing my hands all day makes my skin raw. Gold Bond Ultimate Moisturizing Lotion. Seven intensive moisturizers and three vitamins. It works better than any lotion I've ever used. Can your lotion do that? Gold Bond Ultimate. This stuff really works. It all comes together in the Situation Room. CNN tomorrow night, 7 Eastern. All right, so I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Have you ever gotten hung up uh, trying to talk to those computer-generated voices when you call a store or an office? Well, the people who create those phone voices know how frustrating it can be to talk to a computer instead of a real person. And you won't believe what they're doing to make it a little bit easier. Here's Jeannie Moss. 
It's an option people who hate automated voices can only dream of. Press 1 if you'd like to murder the operator. After all, there's nothing more human than getting enraged over not being able to talk to a human. This is an actual call. I can't believe I'm talking to this stupid robot. I want to talk to a human being, goddammit. They may sound like 911 calls. Help! 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 But all they want rescued from is the interactive voice. What can I get you? A drink. I can't stand them. And it's such a pain in the butt. I hate it. Why? You can't talk to a human being. You gotta go through 20 different things just to ask one simple question. And to add insult to injury... They can never understand me. But at least they know how to apologize. Sorry we're having so much trouble. I'm sorry, but I'm not exactly sure what you want. My mistake. My mistake again. The computer takes the blame, even if it's the caller's fault. Misspelling Peoria, for instance. P-I-A. No, can I talk to a person? Being a virtual operator means always having to okay. say you're sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. Sorry, try telling me your 10-digit account number once more. Can you do that one more time to sound a little more sorry? Meet Jenny from Yahoo, not to be confused with... Hi, I'm Julie, Amtrak's automated agent. Actually, Yahoo Jenny is really actress Deborah mm -hmm. Eliezer, who jokes about what she'd rather be saying to callers. You look great in those pants today. Just to be able to say something like that would be so funny. And maybe <laughs> folks wouldn't swear at her. And when I said, oh, and he goes, sorry, do not recognize that command. Experts like Professor Clifford Nass, author of Wired for Speech, say the worst thing callers can do is get mad. Their voice changes in ways that make it harder to understand. So now the system has an even tougher time, which makes a person even madder. So you get in a hideous downward spiral. I said no, no, N-O, These calls you've been hearing are from an airline. Professor Sri Narayan of the University of Southern California's Speech Analysis Lab is studying 1,400 recordings. I would like to speak with a human being, please. He's developing a computer program that can recognize when a caller's upset. Here you see, you know... Help! 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 You also see these wild pitch variations. The program analyzes pitch, Again. volume, and Help. certain words Help. to determine when to turn the caller over to a live person. Good morning, my name is Fred. Are you real? I was when I woke up this morning. There's even a website that gives tips on how to find a human, how to go around the interactive voices at various companies, though the tips didn't always work. Which would you like? Agent, 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 agent. I think you said that you wanted reservations. If Try right. telling directory assistants you want this town in Ohio. What city or borough? Knock 'em stiff, Ohio. That's North Olmsted, Ohio, right? Even a live operator had trouble. What's the name of the city, ma'am? Knock 'em stiff. Knock 'em stiff. Another tip from experts: try to speak naturally. Trying to say like. This is what I meant, makes it hard to understand, trying to neutralize your accent in some strange or bizarre way. Jenny from Yahoo sounds pretty strange herself. Oh. My. God. You've got more than 50 messages. One Valentine's Day, oh National Public Radio invented a romance between flight information guy Tom and Amtrak Julie. Are you also a little lonely? Please say yes or no. Yes. Though it didn't end well. Call me back when you can act like a human being. What do automated voices have over real voices? The head of a speech recognition company called Nuance explains. And it saves a lot of money. Instead of three to five dollars a call, it's 15 to 20 cents a call. ATMs were once despised, now they're loved. Maybe the same thing will happen to virtual operators. Did you ever swear at them? No, I just pray for them. Press three if you'd like to pray for the operator. Virtual operators don't have a prayer. You are full of crap. Of avoiding abuse. Can I talk to a person? Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. And Jeannie keeping as civil a tongue as she can. In just a minute, we will go back to Florida for the very latest on tonight's developing story, the search and recovery operation after a plane crash that was captured on camera. Think about the mountains you want to climb in the BMW X5. The corners you want to take. The hairpin turns you plan to find. 
because it would be very un-BMW-like to have you thinking about brake pads, rotors, and oil changes. The BMW X5, the only SAV in its class with a standard full maintenance program. Visit your BMW center for a test drive. People should be treated fairly. That's why Elon has no lender fees. Find out how much home you can afford by getting pre-approved today. Those are some of the revolutionary ways we're changing the lending industry. Elon, radically simple. If you have a cold and high blood pressure, you should know that decongestants in these medicines can raise your blood pressure. So why take them? Take decongestant-free Coracetin HBP, powerful relief that won't raise your blood pressure. Save up to 80% by buying Factory Direct. The jewelry exchange imports diamonds direct and makes their own jewelry. No one sells for less. Circle of Love pendants are 89. Three stone tennis bracelets are 169. Two carat, 349. One carat studs are 399. And princess cut diamond platinum bands, 699. Only the jewelry exchange guarantees their jewelry to appraise for double. Buy Factory Direct and save. The jewelry exchange with superstores nationwide or online at jewelryexchange.com. Right now, we go straight back to our top story of the night, the fatal plane crash off Miami Beach this afternoon. Just a short time ago, we took in some exclusive video that is absolutely horrifying to watch. Check this out. It actually shows the plane crashing into the sea with the burning fuselage also falling into the ocean. The Coast Guard says 20 people were on board that plane. So far tonight, 19 bodies have been recovered. Let's check in with John Zarella, who joins us again from the scene with the very latest. I imagine by now it's kind of difficult to see exactly what's going on in terms of recovery operations. Give us the latest. That's right, Paul. It is difficult. Uh, you could just see the blue dots out in the distance there. Literally, those are the uh, the Coast Guard ships, police boats that have uh, cordoned off uh, the area out there. It's Watson Island area. Uh, government cut. It's the inlet where all of the cruise ships and commercial cargo ships come in and out of. That's been closed off tonight as they continue the recovery operations. 19 uh, bodies recovered. They believe there is a 20th. They are still looking for. National Transportation Safety Board, we understand, is out here, is on the scene now, uh, and beginning its investigation into what caused what eyewitnesses have said and that video appear, appears to bear out an explosion and then a fiery crash into the waters just off Miami Beach. Paula? John, what kind of plane was it and where was it headed? It was a seaplane uh, and it was headed from what's called Watson Island here to Bimini in the Bahamas. For, uh, Chalks Airways, the airline, they've been operating since 1919. Officials at the airline tell us they have never had an accident involving passengers in the long history of the airline. This was a first and a very tragic first just days before the holiday season. Paula? John, I know you had the opportunity to talk with a couple of witnesses because these folks weren't too far from the crash site standing on the right. beach. What did they tell you they saw and more importantly, what did they hear? Well, most of the people that we did speak with had the opportunity to listen to told us that they saw and they heard what appeared to be, heard an explosion. Uh, they saw the video, they saw the plane apparently coming apart, the wings separating from the fuselage, and then the body of the of the seaplane crashing back into the water uh, with the uh, the wing following close behind. Paula? I don't think... Uh any of us ever thought we'd see video that so accurately depicted all that. Uh, it's really a, a great tragedy. John Zarella, thanks for the late details tonight. Of course, the investigation continuing in a very aggressive way at this hour. Now we want to know about uh, how you're feeling about some of the stories we brought you this hour. We're going to give you a chance to talk back to us in a new segment called Hey Paula. You can email us your thoughts at heypaula at cnn.com or leave us a voicemail at 877-PAULA-NOW. And that's it for all of us here this evening. Thanks so much for being with us. Larry King Live starts right now. Have a good night.